next step is going to be actually soldering um, the bezel to the, the bezel plate. Um, and so the same way that we did the, uh, the bezel soldering earlier, uh, we want the whole, the join part all around it to be super flush. So you want to make sure that your plate is very flat and that your bezel plate is, is super flat. Um, if need be, you can take um, like a rawhide mallet and put it on your on a metal hammering plate and flatten it all out. Um, but then sand the bottom of it, obviously, and then uh, I, I usually clean up just with a polishing cloth. I'll clean both pieces before um, because again, you want it to be super clean um, so the solder can flow properly. Um, and then I'm just taking my paintbrush. I'm going to dip it in the flux, which is the cupronel, and paint all around the joints. You want to you want to cover where the you want solder to flow um, all with the flux. So we want to make sure we're in exactly in the spot where we want it soldered. And this is where you have to be super precise. If you do it this way, like I said, there's a lot of people that will, will solder the bezel to the plate before they do all the framing and any detail work around it. Um, because if they're not doing stamps and this and, and stuff that go into or that go underneath the, the bezel, um, you wouldn't need to do that before. So if you're just going to be adding some adornments around it or doing another wire, like a frame around the bezel wire uh, or something like that, you can actually b solder this to an unfinished sheet and then cut out to shape. I'm just going to heat it up enough to where the, the flux melts and then I'm going to put the solder on. Okay. You can kind of hear it popping. So now the next step, I'm going to dip each of my little solder pallions, each one of these guys, in the flux. Okay, so I'm using hard solder here, um, and we got it all placed. I got about one, two, three, four, five, six little pallions in there. And when I heat this, because the base of it is a lot thicker than the bezel wire, I'm gonna work around and kind of hit a lot of the charcoal and the ground, and try to try to heat it from the bottom up. You know, because I don't want to put as much heat directly on the bezel wire as I do on the bottom, because uh, you can melt it. So here it goes. So here's the piece. I just took it out of the pickle. Um, so it looks like we have a pretty good seal all the way around. And one thing that I'm going to do is you can still see the seal on the bezel there. Uh, I usually hit that with a file or with a sand with sandpaper. I use my Dremel. There's my dog. Um, so I'm going to file that down. And uh, that's just a way to you can kind of file into into that seam. And uh, make it disappear. So I, I pretty much, I file my bezel all the way around, or sand it, sorry, all the way around just to, just to make it look, I don't know, make it look good. <laughs> What I do is I use these ring bending pliers. Uh, you can see them. So they're half one's round and one's flat. Um, but basically, I'll just bend it kind of as far as I can, like that. And uh, actually, I've done it. This isn't as bad. I've done it with thicker gauge, that is really hard to bend. Um, and I'll what I normally do is I'll use my table. <laughs> I'll kind of use the wood on the table and kind of use that to push down and um, you can see me able to bend bend it a lot of the way like that if it's if it's too hard 
to do it, then I bust out the hammer and uh, try to hammer my fingers minimally and uh, just kind of hit it until it comes down to shape. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is actually the first bale I've done with the angled, with it angled in the front. If this will focus like that. And so that's giving me an unforeseen issue of it being um, a little smaller, on, a little tighter on one side than the other. So what I'll, I normally do anyway is now I'll take my flat file and go in once it's, it's once it's, uh, you know, once it's pretty, pretty much closed, uh, I'll go in, but just file the inside of it with this to make sure it has a good flat surface to, to, to join um, on the top of my pendant. Um, but so this is it's just gonna be a little, a little different. But I'll file that down so we should be able to get a good, a good flat seal or a good flat uh, space in there for a join. Okay, so I did it off camera, but. I was able to file this down to where it's uh, pretty flat in the middle and it fits it fits nicely if we, we can just kind of you want to just fit up push, push over there and um, we can see kind of how it's gonna look and there's a lot of different ways to do bales this is just one way that I think is cool it adds it's a little more character than just like a jump ring on top but you can obviously do that too I mean you can punch a hole in the top here and put a little a little ring or um, you know, you could do you could do like a circle on the back of this that would like go over it and then a ring through that, you know, or a way to, to, to hang it from a ring. Uh, so there's obviously, you know, a million different ways to do it. This is just what I thought was kind of a cool design element. Seems a little more like a, a part of the piece instead of just a, a necessary um, accessory, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and paint my flux on there and... Uh, dab a couple pieces of solder. I'm going to use easy solder this time instead of hard because it melts at a lower temperature and I won't melt my other seams, my other joins. Um, and then we'll go ahead and hit it and see what happens. Okay, so we got a pretty good um, join on that. I need to put it in a pickle still to clean it up. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys. Okay, we're almost to the stage where we set the stone. Um, but first we want to look at this bezel and make sure it's the right height. Uh, you always want it to be a little taller than the stone to start with. And then you can file it down or sand it down. So what I usually do is I'll either take the 220 grit or the 400, depending on how much I need to go down. But I always end with four or 600. Um, and this one it's pretty close you want the wall to be like you know just above the the girdle of the stone uh. so now you can see it's a little closer to the uh, the top of the stone so you just don't want to have a whole lot of leftover um leftover bezel when you're setting it um, but now the next step is to uh, i'm going to sign the back in, with my uh, scribe, that's just how I'm doing my stuff. I don't have a stamp that says my name, but uh, so I'm gonna scrape that in, and then we're gonna oxidize this, and um, and then polish it. So this is a scribe that I use, and I'll sometimes use this to, to trace stuff out on my metal, um, but I also use it to actually just uh, sign my name in the back, and I put the date on it or the year, just because I think that's kind of a cool touch. Okay, so next step is to oxidize. So what I use is liver of sulfur. Um, so it's just a solution that you put a few drops in to water and uh, the hotter the water, the quicker it works. Um, but I just put it in there and I'll leave it in there for a little bit and it'll turn real dark. All right, so here it is coming out nice and black. And uh, I'll rinse it off and let it dry and then we'll polish it. So here it is after it dried up. Um, and there are several different ways you can polish. Uh, I actually, one of my preferred ways is using just steel wool. This is triple zero. Um, I really like the finish. It's more of a matte finish you get from that. Um, if you, I'll sometimes I'll, I have a tumbler, a rock tumbler, and you can put jewelry shot in there, which is a bunch of little steel pellets. 
that um, and just put that in with a little soap and water and tumble that for you know an hour or whatever however long and that really shines it up if you want like that mirror finish so here it is after the, the steel wool polish um, I like it but I actually think I am gonna put it in the tumbler so uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys that and I'll just tumble it for about 45 minutes to an hour and it'll, it'll get real uh, real shiny Okay, so this is my tumbler bucket, and uh, I've got jewelry shot in there, which is a bunch of just little steel, stainless steel pellets that are all different shapes. Um, and so you just throw your uh, jewelry in there, put a little, a little drop of soap, of dish soap, and then fill it up, fill it with water to where it goes just above, just above your jewelry line. Um, and then I'll put this on and go put it in the tumbler. So I put it in here, and there's no on switch. I just plug it in. And that should go. Sometimes it needs a kick start. <laughs> I'll just let that churn for uh, about 45 minutes and we'll come check it out. Okay, so here is the uh, the piece pulled out of the out of the tumbler. It's nice and shiny, but still has some of the dark areas from the uh, patina, from the liver sulfur. Um, so the next step is to set the stone. And uh, I'm going to show you some cool tricks how to do that uh, with the hammer setting technique. Okay, so I'm going to be using Jet Ballistic to set the stone. Um, it is basically a moldable plastic that you heat up with water, uh, with hot water, and you can kind of form it to any shape. And so we'll take the pendant and actually push it down into that, that and then it hardens around it to uh, form kind of a casing that we can put in our vise to then go around and, and hammer the, uh, the bezel into the stone. Um, so that way you're not actually clamping the piece. Um, and you don't damage it from the vice grips. All right, here's that piece set in the jet ballistic. Uh, I must have lost a video or something because I've already hammer set this, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'm gonna reclamp it and just show you what I did, but that video seemed to have vanished from my phone. <laughs> so, um, but this is, I kind of made it small on the bottom so it can fit in the vise here. Okay, so with this hammer setting technique, what, uh, what I'm doing is taking a nail, actually, and filing down and smoothing out the top and polishing it. Um, and the way I've done that is just filed it down and then taken um, polishing cloth, 3M polishing cloth, um, after I filed and sanded it and then polished it up to a, a, a nice bright mirror finish. And uh, so then what you're gonna do is, that's basically gonna be your burnisher and your bezel setter. And because this is in there, you know, this is in there real solid. You have to have a good vise. Um, I just go around with this and with the hammer and just kind of hit the, hit the bezel in all around from all angles. Um, if you have corners, if you have hard, uh, hard corners, do those first. Um, just so that way it doesn't bunch up at the corner. The bezel doesn't bunch up at the corner. So if you do the corners first, then you can kind of go the rest of the way around. Um, usually you'll start, you'll do opposites too. So if you start up top, do some of that and then go around to the bottom and then do the sides. Um, but you just don't want to, you don't want to let it bunch up. So try to kind of move around when you can and do the corners first. But this is how it looks after I've hammer set it. And uh, then I'm going to go down and just take my, my sanding bit on my Fordham and just go along these edges because there's still a little bit of, there's still some bumps. So I'm just going to sand down the edges and uh, really finish it up and then it'll be it'll be done. So now I'm just sanding down the uh, the edges of the bezel and I covered my stone with painter's tape um, just to protect it because sometimes you can slip off and I don't want to scuff up the stone on the last step. Here's the completed piece after all the sanding and and uh, polishing. Um, I'm real happy with it. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing how it was all made. And um, if you guys have any questions, again, please comment. And I'm sure some of y'all have been doing this longer than I have. So if you guys have any tips for me, <laughs> definitely let me know. Um, and check out my website. It's just seaneckle.com. I've got a bunch of my jewelry up on there. You can see more of the stuff that I've made. And uh, I'll, I'll have a link to that in the description of the video as well. But uh, thanks again for watching, guys, and uh, hope you enjoyed.
See you next time.